My name is Pastor Sam Velez. I'm the executive pastor here at Iglesia Cristiana Misericordia. God has a specific word for you. Open up your heart and get ready to receive. The title of my message is God is the greatest. God is the greatest. God is the greatest despite what's happening right now in our world. God is the greatest despite what might, you might be dealing with personally. God is the greatest. Have you ever broken anything before? Do you remember when you were young and you broke something and, and you got the spanking of your life? And even if you never got spanked or even if you've never gone through that, you, we, we all have that feeling when we break something. We, we have that dread of, oh my gosh, I have to pay for this. Oh my gosh, I have to say sorry to this person. We, we, we have that feeling and I want to talk about this because many times, even in, in our personal lives, not just with physical things, but there are moments in our life where we've been broken by people. We've been broken by situations. We've been broken by decisions. We have been broken and because we are broken, we feel like, God, when are we ever going to get the pieces back together? God, how are we ever going to move forward? Maybe this last year, you were broken by a lot of things. The pandemic broke you. People that you knew personally broke you. Things happen, and, and maybe you're in this season of your life where you're just trying to recover. You're trying to get back. You're trying to move forward. And you feel like, God, how am I going to do this with everything that's been broken in my life? I want to tell you about an example. In, in Japanese, art, there's a Japanese art called kintsui. And kintsui is a Japanese art where they get, let's say, for example, broken pottery. And what they do with broken pottery is they mend the pieces together with gold, platinum, or silver. And so for them, this is an art because for them, broken things still have value. In fact, let me show you a picture. Can you put the picture up there real quick? That's what it looks like. So you can see the gold there. You can see that where the cracks where it was broken. And in this kind of art, they put it and they, it, this is art. People pay lots of money to buy these kind of things. And you would think, oh my gosh, it, there's, you can see the cracks and all that. But to them, it was something that is valuable. To them, they realize that, man, even though it's broken, we can still do something with it. And how much more, me and you, that God would get the pieces of our past and still do something with our lives. God would get the broken moments of our lives, the hurts, the pain, the disappointments, and still build something beautiful with the life that we have right now. That's how good God is, that he does not care about your past. He just cares about using it to bring God glory. And I said this long, a long time ago. I said, God will use everything and waste nothing. God will use those broken moments, the moments where you were disappointed, the moments that you cried to build something more for your life. What hurt you in the past made you today. The things that you went through that you hated, it made you to the person that you are. You're stronger today. You're more powerful today. You're smarter today. It made you because God never wastes anything. God is the greatest. Yes, he is. And if you have your Bibles, I want to talk about broken things and weaknesses and things like that. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 12, 9 through 14. Matthew 12, 9 through 14 it says this, it says, then Jesus went over to their synagogue where he noticed a man with a deformed hand. The Pharisees asked Jesus, does the law permit a person to work by healing on the Sabbath? They were hoping he would say yes so they could bring charges against him. And he answered, if you had a sheep that fell into a well on the Sabbath, wouldn't you work to pull it out? Of course he would. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, the law permits a person to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored just like the other one. Then the Pharisees called a meeting to plot how to kill Jesus. How to kill Jesus. As we can see in this story, we, we notice that the man that was there, the Bible says that he has a deformed hand. There's other versions that the Bible says the man had a crippled hand. That the man had, you know, there's different versions. But the reality is, is that man had a problem with his hand. The man, and, and, here, and here's why it's important to understand this. In Bible times, deformity was looked down upon. In Bible times, deformity was not something to be helped. It was something to be rejected. 
So if you had some sort of deformity, if you were blind, if you had some sort of issue, people connected it either with sin or some other problem. People did not want to associate with you. People would not hire you. Imagine we're in this room and you have some sort of problem and I never go to you. I never try to help you because of that problem. You would feel terrible. You would be like, why, why even show up on a Sunday morning if no one wants to associate with me? Because of the problem and the weakness and the deformity or whatever you want to call it that I carry. And so we can see in the story how Jesus enters to this moment and we can see how the man is there and the Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus. The Pharisees had a different plan to hurt, to, to, to kill Jesus. A different plan, but you know what? Jesus turned it around for something better. What they try, that's why I love when the Bible says that God turns everything for our good. Because the Pharisees tried to turn something wrong and Jesus to turn it around. He turned it around. And I pray that over your life, that every enemy that tries to come against you, Jesus will come and destroy that. Nothing would touch God's people. And so I want to talk about this because we all have weaknesses. Maybe we don't have a deformed or a cripple. Maybe we're not, we don't, we don't have those issues, but we do have things that are broken in our life. We do have things in our past that we're not proud of. We have made decisions that have hurt our marriages. We have done things that have brought some sort of thing into our life. And I want to encourage you today because I, I'm going to keep singing this whole sermon so that when you leave this place, you'll always remember that God is the greatest. Just because you are carrying something that is broken does not mean it has to stay that way. In fact, this whole story that I'm telling you about is God wanting you to move from where you're at to where you need to be. Let's go a deep, let's go a step further. Where you're at to where you are meant to be. From where you're at currently to where you are meant to be. If you're taking notes this morning, number one is this, as we talk about what it is that God wants to do with our broken lives, is that we all have weaknesses. We all have, this is not deep theology, like, oh, I can't understand this, but <laughs> Tiff, you know, you don't know. We all have weaknesses. Nobody woke up this morning after chowing down on carne asada and said, man, I woke up with a six pack today, man. God is the greatest. No one in this room can say they are perfect in all that they do and they have no weakness. That's why, have you ever noticed in interviews, the person that's interviewing, they always ask, what are some of your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Because what happens? We, when we carry weaknesses, what we want to do is we don't want people to know about our weaknesses. But they do. Not because they want to hurt you, but more to help you to develop you. But here's the thing, we all have weaknesses. The man with the crippled hand, deformed hand, shriveled hand, whatever you want to name it, he wasn't the only one in the room with a weakness. The Pharisees had a weakness. Their weakness maybe not was, was not something that was external, not physical. Their weakness was in their heart. They had a doubt in their faith in God. They had a hardness of heart. He might have had a shriveled hand, but they had shriveled hearts. And so, while the man was waiting for his miracle, they also needed a miracle for themselves. See, we, we, we all carry all kinds of weakness. Not everyone in this room is perfect. Maybe your weakness is, man, you got anger problems. Maybe your weakness is, uh, you got lust problems. Maybe your weakness is, man, you don't know how to submit. You have a hard time submitting to authority. Maybe you have a, you, you, your weakness where you, you gossip. We all have different types of weaknesses that God needs to mend. That God needs to fix. We have things that break us. We have things like this man that we're not proud of. We have things that we're carrying that we don't want to carry. And the only person that can bring any kind of healing is Jesus. So regardless of how visible your weakness is or how hidden it is, they are still weaknesses. They're still weaknesses. We all 
have weaknesses and we have to get to a place to understand and to accept the fact that I don't have it all together. That is why I go to Jesus. The moment that you think that you have it all together is the moment that you lose. The moment that you think you don't need help, you don't need correcting, you don't need change. The moment you begin to think that is the moment that your downfall comes. Because the Bible says that pride comes before the fall. Pride will come. And I'm sure all of us at some point, pride reigned in our life and we fell and we fell hard. Because we did not want to accept the weakness. We did not want to accept when someone was calling out something out of us. We didn't want that. We love it when people praise us. We love when people strike our ego. We love that. But nothing grows out of that. Nothing changes out of that. There are moments where we have to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I got some issues that need saving. I got some issues that need changing. Some of you want God to promote you. Understand that change has to happen down here before God elevates you to here. But we all have weaknesses. Number two is this, is that our weakness does not stop our value. Our weakness does not stop our value. Jesus declared to this man that he was valuable. Jesus calls out this man in front of everybody, but he declared that he was valued. Jesus saw his worth before his healing. Jesus saw his worth before his healing. Jesus saw him. Jesus saw what could happen. Jesus saw something more than just a deformed hand. Jesus saw a miracle in the making. Jesus saw, and I'm here to tell you because Jesus sees you. You might feel like you're lost in the crowd. You might feel like, God, you're probably paying attention to other people. My life isn't that good. And God, um, I'm not perfect. You should probably look at other people. But Jesus sees you. We and you are not just valuable when we have it all together, church. That's religion. Religion makes you feel like you have to have it all together so that God can do something in your life. Once you have it all together, then, then God will do something. No, no, that's, that's religion. That's what religion is. Religion puts burdens and burdens and burdens. And that's why sometimes we feel like when we come to church, you feel like, man, I can't, I can't catch a break. Man, I can't please God because we're living out of religion. We're living out of religion. And so our value is not based on having it all together. In fact, the Bible says in the New Testament, he says to come just as we are. Just as we are. Not the, the clean you, not the perfect you. No, Jesus says come just as you are. Isn't God so good that he asks us to come just as we are? In fact, I want to read to you in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, Paul says this. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our greatest power is from God, not ourselves. Not ourselves, it comes from God. There is treasure in brokenness. There is beauty in brokenness. There is something that God can do out of the jar that we are. Today, this morning, you might feel like you're done. You might feel like you're, you're not worth much because of maybe what someone did to you because of something that happened in your past, because of things that you have thought in your mind. But can I tell you something that God sees more? God sees CEOs. God sees someone that is rich. God sees someone that is whole. God sees someone that is beautiful. God sees something more than we might see in ourselves. He is the greatest. The last thing I want to touch on is this, is that what we reveal, Jesus can heal. What we reveal, Jesus can heal. I can, I can imagine the man with the deformed hand, the, the feeling that he had of being in the synagogue and Jesus asking him to stand up in front of everybody and asking him to do something out of his comfort zone. He told him to stretch out his hand. 
I don't know what he did with his hand. I don't know if he always hit his hand. I don't know if he was always, you know, just trying to, to figure out a way to not let people know that he had some deformity. That way people won't reject him. I don't know how he did what he did, but Jesus tells the man to stand up and to stretch out his hand. I can't, ima- I can't imagine the feeling. It's like if I made you stand up right now, stand up right now. You would probably stand up, but you would be like, oh my gosh, what's he going to say? It's kind of like when, uh, if a prophet comes and you're like, don't pick me, don't pick me. <laughs> you're like hiding, reading it. You've never read your Bible in your life, but you're like this. <laughs> See, because most of us, we do not like to show our weaknesses. In fact, we have been professional. We are professionals at hiding our weaknesses. Most of us, we don't like to show it. Most of us, we don't like people to know. That is why it's crazy to me that we would rely so much. That's why social media is a blessing and a curse because social media, what do we do? Filters. Filters after filters after filters after filters to get the perfect shot, the perfect look. They don't see my pimple. They don't see that I'm getting old. You know, they don't. Botox, you know, it makes you look perfect. All, we fall into this trap, even through social media, where we're constantly trying to enhance the way we are to gain approval of other people. And it's the same thing where like, we have been so good at coming to church, so good at worshiping, so good at sitting here every Sunday, even though we have some issue, we're good at hiding it. We don't want people, for some reason, we've created this mindset that I can't let people know that I'm struggling. I can't let people know that I'm hurt. I can't let people know that I've got broken pieces all around my life. I can't. And so we get into this craze where we we continue to live out this thing of hiding. Hiding. Do you remember when, when we were kids, we used to play hide and seek? The point of hide and seek was what? To hide so that no one can find you. But can I tell you something? Jesus is different. Jesus wants to find you. Jesus wants to heal you. Jesus wants to to, to promote you. Jesus wants to bless you. And he doesn't need you to hide. He just needs you to be present. And say, God, here I am. Broken as I am. Torn down as I am. And here I am, my family's struggling, my kids are struggling, my job's been been a mess, but God, here I am. I want to be found. I want to be healed. And so many times we, we treat Jesus like hide and seek where we don't want him to find us. Think about it. Adam and Eve, what is the first thing they do? They hide. After they sin, their first reaction is let's hide. We're naked. We got to get clothes on. Let's hide. Thinking they could hide from God. They hide. And my prayer, church, is that we will be the kind of church that we will come just as we are. Not ashamed, but open to saying, well, I need help. Open to saying, God, I need a healing. God, pray over my business, my job. Open to saying, you know what? My kids are struggling right now. And we don't know what else to do. Being open about it so that you can find healing, restoration, direction open so you can find that in him here's the thing because if we do not do this what we do is that if we continue to hide things we'll continue to experience the things we're hiding in other words what you tolerate you will experience what you tolerate you will experience just like in your house you do not tolerate disrespect it's the same thing Let's say you tolerate disrespect, you're always going to experience disrespect. Let's say you tolerate different kinds of sins, you're always going to experience those sins. Let's say you tolerate your brokenness, you will always be broken no matter how hard you try. No matter how hard you try, you experience what you tolerate. None of us in our homes If something were to break in our house, the first thing we do is we pick it up. None of us leave it there. Well, let's see what happens with it. If you, especially you have like babies and kids, you don't want them stepping on glass. It's not like, oh, let them them step on glass. It's to build character. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. We, we, We pick it up. 
We throw out the trash when it starts to smell. We don't leave it there and just, well, let's see how long this lasts. Guinness Book of Records, leaving trash in my house. Nobody does that. If you do, we'll pray for you today. Anoint you, cast out demons, whatever it has to do. We'll do it. We don't do that. We deal with it. We throw it. Okay, so I want to emphasize that one more time that what we reveal, Jesus can heal. The things that, that we hate and want to change will never change until me and you make a move. The things that we want to see change in our personal life, the pieces that we want God to put together will never change until me and you make a move. For the man with the deformed hand, his healing came not when he stood up, but when he stretched his hand. His healing came the moment he heard God's word and acted on it. He heard God speak, do this, and he did it. That's where healing came. That's where the miracle was formed. The moment he responded to the instructions of God. The moment he responded. It's the same thing for our lives. The moment me and you begin to create a habit and a consistency where we are responding to the word of God. Blessings come. Miracles come. Changes happen. Because we made a move that we weren't making before. The Bible doesn't say how many years, or the Bible doesn't talk about his life. The Bible just says, hey, this guy had a problem. Jesus comes, calls it out. He responds, and healing happens. And in the same way, God wants to bring healing to your heart. God wants to get all the broken pieces and create something out of it. Something that is valuable. Something that is new. It's no longer broken. It's new. But it starts by me and you making a move. I don't know what your situation is this morning. I don't know what you're personally going through. I do not know what broke you, what has broken you. I don't even know if it's been years and you still got pieces laying around that you haven't been able to put back together. Stretching your faith looks different for all of us. Stretching your faith might come in the form of forgiving. Even if the person doesn't forgive you back. Stretching your faith can look like in the form of maybe you're in this room and you've never really given Jesus your life. And you're saying, you know, Pastor, I, I, I want to start fresh. I don't want to live in weakness. I want to experience the greatness of God all the days of my life. Stretching for you might look like decisions that are personal, that have to be made. Stretching looks different for all of us. But God uses us in the stretch. Because it's not about him stretching his hand. It's about his obedience to what he, God said. It was never about his stretching of the hand. It was about him responding to what God had already said. And God has already said a lot of things in his word. Amen. God has promised people. He has promised us blessings and healing and wholeness. He has promised us victory. Even when we feel like we, there is no victory. He has promised us a heaven. Heaven is waiting. God has promised us a lot of things. Now it's time for us to respond to what he's already promised. Just like the Japanese art that I talked to you about it's called Kintsui. Just like that. The Japanese understood that something can always be made with what is broken. Something can always be made with what is broken. I want to pray for you. For people in this room that are dealing with broken pieces that need God to mend. For people in this room that are saying, Pastor Sam, I need to make a move. I need to make a stretch. I haven't been responding to the word of God like I should. And because I haven't, I'm still in the same cycle. I'm still experiencing the same things. I don't see change, but I want change. God, I thank you today. 
I thank you for this reminder, Lord, that God, you see us. You see what is broken that needs to be fixed. You see what we lack. You see what we need. We, you see our hurt, our pain. You see our past. And God, I thank you, Lord, that although you see it, you also have a miracle for it. You also have a story to tell. You also have a hand that heals. And I pray for every single person in this room, in Jesus' name, that starting today, that we would make the move, that we would make the stretch, that we begin to act on your word, that we begin to act on your promises, that we begin to act on a different level. God, that you would begin to guide our steps and guide our families. I pray for people that are broken and sad today, that in Jesus' name, the depression would leave and joy would enter the room. That sadness would leave and joy would enter the room. God, maybe our past broke us through people, but God, you're starting a new journey and you're going to provide for our journey. You're going to provide for our needs and we're going to experience more than we've ever experienced in our life. God, we surrender that to you in Jesus' mighty name. In G, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come, that you would come and rest. God, we release our brokenness to you. We're not broken pieces, God. You've, you're putting us back together. We're not some dirt on the side. We're more. We're valuable, God. We stand on your word today. In Jesus' name. If you're in hey, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were encouraged and challenged through God's word. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, today's the day. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, God, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior. This was your first time. You've made the greatest decision ever. If you're new or you've never been to our church, every single Sunday we have service just for you at 9 a.m. We'll see you there.